and welcome to the Mars Hill Bible Study. In today's study, we're going to discover that accepting Jesus is a sin. Many Christians today have been taught that we can become saved by simply accepting Jesus. We all know people who have received an invitation of the church where the pastor lays hands on folks, some of which are filled with emotion. And then some weeks later, the person joins the church, is water baptized and pronounced saved. The problem is there is not a single verse in the Bible which says we must accept Jesus to become saved. The fact is, Jesus plainly teaches in John chapter 6, verse 44, that no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him. In fact, according to verse 56 of the same chapter, Jesus' own disciples turned away from him after hearing that they could not come to Jesus of their own will. Let's read the verse. John 6 Verse 44, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Then when we skip down to verse 65 of John 6, Jesus repeats this phrase, no man can come to me, to ensure that it was not misunderstood. In verse 65 we read, and he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time on, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And of course, this is the same situation that we're facing today. When people who have been taught that we can accept Jesus, learn that we cannot come to him unless the Father draws us, many turn away from the true gospel. Okay, if we can't become saved by accepting Jesus, why does Roman chapter 10 verse 9 say that we will become saved if we believe in our hearts? Let's read the verse. Romans 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that Jesus hath raised that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved but unfortunately we fail to realize that verses like Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 teach that the heart is desperately wicked moreover in Psalm chapter 58 verse 3 we read the wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. This is the spiritual condition of mankind before he becomes saved. He can't believe in his heart because his heart is desperately wicked from the moment that he is born. So what is the solution? Do I have to wait upon God to save me? Yes. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 26 says, It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. In this regard, we wait upon God to give us a new heart and a new spirit. As we read in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26, there we read, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you, or within you, and cause you to walk in my statues, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And so we see that once God puts his, puts, gives us this new heart, and puts its spirit in us, he will cause us to keep his commandments. And therefore, when we read verses like John chapter 10, verse 9, where God says we have to believe 
on Jesus with our heart, we are able to do it because God has given us a new heart and a new spirit. And then he guides us and drags us as John chapter six, verse 44 says, he drags us to Jesus. Now going back to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 25, we see a very important point that describes the condition of our heart before we become saved. Let's go back to Ezekiel 36 verse 25. There we read, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And so what we find here is God likens our works to become saved to idols. We see in other places in the Old Testament that these idols are in the heart. For example, in Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4, we read, Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth forth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. And so we see that these idols are in our heart. And as a result, our hearts are desperately wicked as we learned in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine. And so we know that these idols are equivalent to the idea that we can become saved by accepting Jesus. But Jesus said, no man can come to him unless the Father draws him. And God also affirms that we cannot believe in our hearts unless God gives us a new heart and cleanses us of the idols which represent man's works or attempts to become saved. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, God explains the gospel in its essence. There we read, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, if anyone is attempting to become saved by accepting Jesus, being baptized in water, or even speaking in tongues, they give evidence that they are worshiping idols, which are the works of man's own hands. In the next study, we're going to examine Revelation chapter 9, verse 20, where God warns that the church came under judgment because she began to teach that we can become saved by the works of our own hands. And again, in that same verse, God likens those works to idols of gold and silver. Wonderfully though, we are living in a time when God is bringing his people out of the church so that they can cleanse their temples by removing those high places, idols, and graven images, which God views as works gospels. Well, that concludes today's study. Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless you.